Welcome to Cool Talk and the Presidential Series, President Number 27, William Howard Taft. He was born in September 1857. His parents were very, very strict. They didn't have a lot of money, but they pushed all five of their sons for success. They tolerated nothing less. Now, Taft went to Yale College, and he was very, very popular. Now, his dad didn't like popularity. He equated popularity with unsuccess. Now, William Howard Taft became the fattest president the United States had ever had, and he was kind of heavy while he was in college. Friends called him Big Lub, Big Bill. People made fun of his weight, and William Howard Taft made fun of his weight too. But he excelled in wrestling, horseback riding, tennis, golf, and dancing. Now, William Howard Taft graduated from Yale College. There were 127 students that year that graduated, but his father was very disappointed. Why? Because out of 127 students, William Howard Taft graduated at number two. He came in second. You believe that? Now, William Howard Taft was not brilliant, but he did work hard. And his father wanted him to be a lawyer, so he did. But his real dream was to become the Supreme Court judge. And by golly, he would work hard to get it. This was his lifelong dream. Now, in his 20s, Taft met Helen Heron, who he called Nellie. They met at a party, they danced, he proposed to her, and they got married in 1886. They were married for 44 years. Now, Helen, or Nellie, as he called her, she was very independent-minded. Uh, her mom did not allow her to study music, but Taft be believed in women's rights, and that was unusual for the times. They had three children. The oldest, Robert, became a senator. He even graced the cover of Time magazine. Charles became a mayor of Cincinnati. And daughter Helen, impressive, graduated, became dean of her college, got a doctorate in history, traveled the country, and supported women's rights. Taft tried to be Supreme Court justice, missed a chance, but then in 1900, President McKinley named him Governor General of the Philippines. He negotiated with Pope Leo XIII to purchase Philippine islands that belonged to the Vatican. And then, President Theodore Roosevelt offered him his dream job to become Supreme Court Justice. He reluctantly turned it down, believing that the Philippines still needed him. Taft continued to pursue his dream to become Supreme Court Justice, but there were no openings at the time. Then, Theodore Roosevelt made him Secretary of War, and after that, he polished him up to succeed him as president. Now, Taft did not want to be president of the United States, but his wife, Nellie, wanted to be first lady. So she persuaded him, and he said, Okay, Nellie, I'll be president if you want me to. So Taft ran for president and won easily. Nellie was very happy, but sadly, shortly afterwards, she suffered a stroke that left her very handicapped and speechless. Her daughter, Helen, had to act as first lady. Now Taft was very, very depressed. He was not happy being president of the United States. And worse than that, he named six other men as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, the position that he was dreaming of having, and now as president seemed that he would no longer get. He got very, very depressed, and he began to eat and eat. He ballooned up to 350 pounds. And we don't know if the story is true or not, that he actually got stuck in the bathtub, but a new bathtub was purchased for him, a huge bathtub, custom-made. And you can see in this picture, four men sitting in it. Looked like a hot tub to me. Now, Taft was very indifferent to the press. He didn't have the flair that other successful presidents had. He also thought the president should only work inside the law, not like Roosevelt, who would be creative. Taft was hindered by the law. He didn't know how to think outside the box. And yet, Taft broke up more monopolies, more trust in one term than Roosevelt did, almost twice as many. However, after promising to lower tariffs, he allowed Congress to raise them. Not a very popular move. He then passed and pushed for the 16th Amendment that allowed the federal government to collect 
income taxes. When you think of income taxes, thank Taft. Towards Latin America, Taft developed a dollar diplomacy. It was a way of helping boost Latin America and try to keep the Europeans out. Now Taft, because of his weight, developed sleep apnea and also somnolence, which basically made him fall asleep. He'd fall asleep during meetings. He'd fall asleep during dinner. He'd even fall asleep standing up, a very dangerous condition that really hindered his thinking. Now, Theodore Roosevelt felt that his good friend Taft had betrayed his legacy by raising tariffs and hiring people regardless of whether or not they were progressive Republicans. Taft was very conservative, Roosevelt very liberal. So what did Roosevelt do? He decided to run for the nomination of the Republican Party. And that made Taft very sad. Taft actually cried and said, why? Roosevelt is my friend. Now, Taft didn't want to be president, but he felt betrayed by Roosevelt and he fought hard to win the Republican nomination. He outmaneuvered Roosevelt. He knew he didn't have the flair to campaign like Roosevelt did, but he went delegate to delegate and won the Republican nomination. And then Roosevelt went off and helped form the Progressive Party. Well, what did this do? By Taft and Roosevelt splitting the Republican Party, all they did was guarantee that a Democrat, Woodrow Wilson, would win the presidency. Now, this was heartbreaking for Nellie. She was recovering from her stroke, and just as she was getting better, now she had to leave the White House. Now, Taft and Roosevelt did reconcile in their old age, but it was never really the same. Even though Taft was very sad and cried at the gravesite when Theodore Roosevelt died. Well, Taft didn't miss the White House. He began losing weight. It looks like losing the presidency actually saved his life for a while. Uh, he lost about 80 pounds in the long run, worked at Yale, advocated peace for different nations, and pretty much you could say he kept very busy. Then, President Harding called him. Taft was in his early 60s at the time, and President Harding offered him his dream job, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, and Taft accepted he was Supreme Court Justice for nine years, the last nine years of his life, and he could not have been happier. In 1930, he was very, very sick from a heart condition. He resigned, and shortly afterwards, he died. Well, that's pretty much it for Taft. Send me your comments below. This is Cool Talk.